You remember these servos from last week? A few of them in my demonstration didn't work. These two here specifically. So at the moment, I've got just the basic one servo uh, program running on the Pipeco. And all three of them are connected in parallel to the same data output. Same PWM output. And for some reason, these two aren't working. If I give them a kick, they will start working. But I'm fairly confident that there's something mechanically wrong inside of them. And if I stop it, yeah, for some reason, they're not working when you restart them. So I'm guessing that there's something mechanically buggered up inside them. Uh, but that's a good excuse to tear into them and just see what's inside one of these cheap hobby servo motors. So at their core, these servo motors are basically a DC geared motor um, with its output shaft coupled both to the servo horn up there, but also to a potentiometer. And then the DC input for that motor and the three wires from the potentiometer all go to a little controller board which compares the PWM incoming to the value of that potentiometer and creates an error voltage and then sends that to a motor driver, which drives this motor in one direction or another to basically make sure that this pot position matches the PWM coming in. I was going to finish drawing this out, but it's easier for everybody involved to use somebody else's drawing. So for 50 Hertz, which has a 20 millisecond period, um, for zero degree rotation on the servo, it's expecting to see a one millisecond pulse width for 90 degrees or right in the middle, it's expecting to see 1.5 millisecond. And for 180 degrees, it's expecting to see a two millisecond, uh, pulse width in its square wave. There's a lot of code to do that as a few people have done a DIY Arduino based version uh, to control motors and stuff but this is all likely going to have a native chip that just does this and does only this so inside this little motor I'm expecting you to find a gear motor and you can actually see the gears up there that drive the servo horn I'm expecting to find a potentiometer and I'm expecting to find a little controller board. Oh, wow. That screws the full length of the thing. That's different. So I'm also expecting this thing to fall apart in my hand into a million little pieces and not be able to get it back together. But if that doesn't happen, then maybe we can find what the mechanical jamming is inside here and fix it. So I think... I see a seam there. Yeah, I do. Okay. So we have the motor with its two wires coming down to the little controller board. We have our three incoming wires going to the controller board. We have a little eight pin chip and not much else on that board, or at least not on this side of the board. Can we pull the board out by yanking on the wires? No, it's starting to separate up here though gears okay so on the servo horn side we have a gear with a little mechanical stopper and then down here we have the motor shaft gear and one two three four stages of gear reduction we'll see if i can ever get this back together there's the gears off, and this looks like the shaft of a potentiometer here. I think. Now, how do we get the rest of this out? There's the motor comes out. Okay. And then, can I push that through or push it back the other way? I don't know. So I can just barely see the three terminals of the potentiometer. There's one, there's one, 
There's one over there coming up to the board. Potentiometer is mounted from this side and the board is mounted from that side. So in order to remove the board, I would have to unsolder the potentiometer. But I don't think I need to do that because I don't think there's anything else to see on the back of that board. I think it's just that little 8 pin chip. But maybe I should go deeper. Okay, this is just escalated. I want to see what's under there. Aha! There we go. There's the potentiometer and... Oh, there's another 8-pin chip on this side of the board and a couple other things. A couple capacitors, that makes sense. And a little transistor, which probably drives the, uh, the motor, I would assume. Well, how do you get bidirectional out of that? And, of course, this chip on the back side of the board doesn't have any numbers on it, which makes this kind of sucky. Maybe it's a microcontroller? I don't know. On this side, though, there is a number. TC118S. Hmm. To the data sheets. With some assistance from Google Translate, I've found a data sheet for that chip. It is a single-channel DC motor driver, which makes perfect sense. So it can handle up to 7.2 volts, and it can handle 1.2 amps continuous or 2 amps peak. Hmm, what if I could repurpose this thing for some other use if I can't get this thing fixed properly? Uh, minimum voltage 2.4, so that makes sense. We're using it with uh, 3.2 volts, so that works just fine. Here's a fairly typical example circuit, and that's probably pretty close to what's going on here, uh, minus a couple capacitors. The input A and input B will be coming from the mystery chip on the other side of the board. At any given point, one will be held probably at either 5 volts well, VCC or ground, and the other one will be PWM pulsing to adjust the speed of this as it gets closer to the target. That's my suspicion anyway. Okay, well, that's interesting, but it's kind of a diversion from where we started off. So I am going to solder this potentiometer back in, solder the board back in, solder the motor back in. And, uh, well, maybe it'll still work when I'm done with that. We'll see. Okay, I think I've got it back together. Let's just see if it still does anything. Yep. Yeah, the little motor's running, and it reverses direction when the other ones do, so that's good. So now I can continue on back to the original problem, which was the mechanical jamming. I think I'll just start putting gears back onto here and see if I can figure out what's going on with that. So that one goes onto there. This one goes onto that shaft, I think. Yeah, that fits. And this one goes on here. And that drives this one. Let's just turn that back on and see what happens. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to mark one tooth on the slowest gear on this thing so that we can actually see it move, I hope. Yeah, okay. It is kind of binding, though. See, it's not always running a full tilt boogie. It's occasionally binding, and I don't know why. And now that I said that, it stopped. Oh. See, that top gear is way out of plane, or is it the middle one? Kind of binding up on each other. That's weird. I mean, they're probably really cheap gears. Maybe I should just look for some mechanical problems there. I wonder if that little molding mark, rejector pin mark, or whatever it is, is catching occasionally. don't see any flashing or anything weird on the gear. 
this one's actually got some grease on it so that's useful but i don't see anything out of the ordinary on it either so i am not quite sure what's going on here i think i might just take my scalpel and just trim that little bit of ejector pin crud off the back of there but other than that i don't see any mechanical reason for this thing to not work or to jam like it was so back together again and even if i put some mechanical resistance against it it slows down but it still goes through its full rotation so i don't know Maybe that little bit of flashing on the ejector pin was it. Let's put it back together and see what happens. I just got to get this D shaft here aligned with what's going on up in the top there. There we go. That wasn't quite as ugly as I had thought it would be back on again uh oh yeah there's a notch for the wires okay i don't know if i actually accomplished anything with this other than learning a bit more how these things are put together but we shall see there's those long needle-like screws well there it's all back together Place your bets. Does it work the same as it did before? Better? Worse? Hmm. That ain't right. That ain't right at all. I think I made it worse. Is it going through 480 degrees at least? Yeah, okay. So why is it jamming and not causing, did I get the potentiometer not aligned correctly or something? I don't know. Well, it works. It's hitting its end stops. And that's what that little nubbin was on the underside is an end stop. I don't know whether the other one's going to do the same thing, but I think for now, I am just going to, wow, that is really messed up. So I think for now, I'm just going to put this one aside and call it a failure. Um, these things are cheap. They're poor tolerances. So I think what I will do is set this one aside, as I said, and maybe save it for salvage. I might pull that board out of there again and try it with a slightly bigger motor that motor driver was capable of driving what did it say up to an amp and a half continuous or two amps peak so that opens up a lot of possibilities for attaching a potentiometer to a much bigger gear motor and seeing if i can do something interesting with it but i think that is all for right now um i've satisfied my curiosity Although I still don't know why it was jamming, but I can live with that for now because I have more ideas. Thanks for watching. Uh, comments and questions down below as usual. Oh, and because I know somebody's going to ask, I have been drinking Night Owl La Shop Stout from La Shop Brewery, sorry, Brasserie, here in Winnipeg. Yeah, that's the end for real. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.